Experience Entertainment Review and I am super elated, I'm ecstatic, I'm happy uh, because uh, one uh, individual that I have admired since my childhood is here with us on Entertainment Review today. Uh, she is a, an, a multiple award winning gospel singer, Ohima Mercy. Hi, welcome to Entertainment hey, Review. Hi, 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 hi. I'm so excited to be part of this wonderful table. Yeah. <laughs> <Yay. laughs> yeah, welcome. Thank you. It's an honor. Yes, okay. It's it's a great honor to have mm. you on the show as well. Um, so first of all, I have a lot of questions in mind that I want to ask it's you, but they're very important. <laughs> I and <laughs> but yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The first question I will ask mm -hmm. you is, kindly tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Okay, I, I've been that small girl growing up in a crife. I was brought up in the Church of Pentecost. So okay. I was actually, um, my father was a presiding elder. Mm. So right in the Church of Pentecost, I was leading the um, praise and worship at the Sunday school. And then I grew up at the age of 15 years. I was graduated to the adult church. So I was, I, I find myself um, part of the praise and worship leaders. And I remember somewhere um, 2001, I had an encounter with uh, Elder Mekun's father who had a prayer camp. Okay. So I was actually working with him. And for me, I had so much impact because I was with him for, I think we worked for almost three years before coming up with my first album. I had so much impact and strength. Oh, okay. So your very first, you, you came out, Ohima Mercy, in 2005. 2005. Yes. Okay. So that was when people really got to know yes. you. Um, so uh, I think I read somewhere that you were nominated. You had several nominations. Yes. Um, within that same year. With my about, first album. Yes, with my first Demo. album. Yeah. Exactly. It has seven nominations. And the funny part of it is that I didn't even know I was nominated. <laughs> so there is this woman of God that bought tickets for me. So I went to the auditorium. I, I couldn't find a place to sit. And so I was sitting at the back, far away. Okay. And amazingly, I saw that my picture... And my video really? was wow. being played. And when I come on, then I, you see me shouting. <laughs> but then, after that, I realized that I was part of the people that were nominated. nominated. And I was so excited. Being nominated mm. alone, yes. <clears throat> it's like, yes, sheer heaven, BBRD, Gumison. And it actually gave me that strength to do more. And I felt like, Coming up with your first album and you've been nominated in nine categories. Yeah. Wow. I actually did not receive any award, but mm. I was so, so happy and fulfilled that the message that God gave to me is really, really had impact on the lives of people and people are falling in love with the ministry. That yeah. was the first um, step right. into um, coming out with lots of albums and by the grace of God, here I am. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you how you felt about being nominated and not winning. I know, I know, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I was so good. I felt so good. And I was asking somebody, what does it mean? Oh. Yeah, because I have no knowledge about it. Because right. coming from Kofodia, I didn't actually know much into the branding side, mm -hmm. the industry. Okay. First, I was, so I was learning a lot. Okay. Because I have to allow God to take me through the process to understand my calling and, and to understand the physical side of the industry. Mm -hmm. So I was so excited when I saw myself being nominated and being put on the screen and my songs were being played and I was like, dear yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I was so fulfilled. I mean, on, on that note, I want to congratulate you on your latest uh, when at the VGMA. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a very long time since you started. I want to ask, how did you know you've got to sing? Or you've got to be a gospel artist. Were you, I mean, were you called? Did you decide for yourself that I want to do this? Let us understand okay, that. Okay, I went through a lot in life. And I remember um, one of the days I, one thing that the Lord gave to me is writing of songs. Mm. Where I did not even know what I was doing. Mm. Mostly, I was so sensitive to the spirit of God. So, because I was in the SU 
I became the SU president. So when I have any message, I'll just write it down and then ask God and pray over it. I remember I was going through a lot. Um, I was owing someone and the person was actually putting so much pressure. I was in the classroom and the lady came <laughs> and the, I was wearing heel and one of the heel got torn. So I was like walking and I was asking God, why do I have to go through all this? Yeah. I serve you diligently. I do everything. So sometimes in life it comes mm. where you go through a lot of battles and you are asking God, why? Yes. So I just sat down somewhere and then I had this message. Mm. So I wrote it down. So I had this book that I have a lot of messages in it. So there's this man of God that was just passing by and then he met me by the roadside and said, I know you sing in the church. I'm doing a program, so I want you to come and minister. And I was so excited, hey, because I heard the man of God is so rich. And <laughs> I needed somebody to even recognize yeah. me yeah. of what God has given me and to even allow me to minister. So when I, I, I got there, I, I was praying, God, use me to, have, to make so much impact in the church. And when I got there, lo and behold, God did what I asked him. Mm -hmm. Whilst I was singing, the man of God said, no. I felt it in my spirit that uh, I have to take you to the studio. Wow. Whilst I have no songs. So he asked me, do you have songs? And I said, no. And he said, in the next three months, I'm giving you a chance to look for somebody, go to Elder Mirku, go to everyone, to write songs for you. and to come." So in the night I was praying, then I took, I, I took the book. And I realized every bit of thing that I was going through, all the messages were actually waiting for that particular time wow. for me to come up with. <clears throat> so, sometimes I will be watching and then then I right after I felt my spirit is singing and then I'll start to record mm. on phones and all that. Then... He asked someone to go and look for someone that was an engineer. Mm. So we had Nasi. One of my friends had recorded then with Nasi. Mm -hmm. But Nasi was not recording gospel music. So we, we went there and then Nasi said, no, I can help you. Wow. It wasn't actually well ring, arranged. But Nasi actually held me, took it to himself and helped me to come up with this beautiful Mademe a whole lot of songs and he had hits. <laughs> him very beautifully. So from there, I realized God has really, really called me on a purpose. Yeah. So I was so sensitive. Anytime God wants to give me a message, I quickly, then mm -hmm. I go and write it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I pray over it. Anytime I pray over it, let's say for, for instance, I was, I was praying uh, on um, yeah. Yeah. Then the Lord took me to the Bible from uh, Deuteronomy 28. If you will diligently yeah. obey my voice, these are the promises that I'm giving you. So that is where I realized that I've been called into the ministry and God has kept me up till now. That's quite a, a, great, a great journey to note. And when you look back at all of these years, when you started, were you thinking that, okay, after 10 years, I'm still going to be here? Or after, mm -hmm. you know, all of these years, one day, 15, 20, I'll still be here? Mm. I, it wasn't that in mind. Because the, the most important thing is not to deviate. And one thing that I'm so much afraid of is to stick to my calling. I've been called to bring hope. I've been called to inspire. I've been called to bring people into the kingdom of God. And I realized that that is where God has called me. So anytime God gives me a message, no matter how it is, I, I listen to the voice of God. When I get the message, I will listen to the Is it what you want us to come up with? Yeah. And then most of the times I get a lot of messages and the Lord sit down with me and then we select amazingly. Mm. So coming out with songs for me is not that ordinary. Mm. 
mm. just going to the studio. I remember writing um, Ufrim, for instance. I was at the studio where coming out with a particular song. And then my spirit was so troubled. So I told them, they should give me 10 minutes. I'm coming. Then I, I, felt, I found myself singing um, Ufrim within and the messages were were coming like somebody was just right beside me singing so i told them i'm going to the booth this is another message god has given to me i was actually working with the morris yeah right there okay. we did not even edit i just sang it for my spirit and i'm wow. telling you and it was recorded it was recorded you know what we have that song so it let's let's watch that, and I'm like sure I'm that she will remain the I'm thinking about you. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll free move by on your mercy. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. Okay, so that is we'll free move by on your mercy, and you can count the number of songs. Like there's a total list of songs, hit songs yeah. from back back in the days till now and she's still here I'm mean, really grateful that she joined us today um, Harriet's got a couple yeah. of questions and then, so mm. with everything you, you're saying right now all mm. that I'm getting from it is obedience yes. listening and, and like I, I still have the chills and I just realized that when you obey God and you listen to him you become successful. Yes. I think it's one of the key points to becoming successful in life but let's let's talk about Tehila hey <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the whole Tahila, how mm -hmm. did this big thing come up? All right. Somewhere in 2012, I was in a plane. Mostly when I'm in a plane, sometimes I will sleep, get up, and meditate because I was right from Ghana to California. So there were a lot of transits. So along the line, I asked God, what next? was right from the vacation when I come to Ghana, we are releasing a song. Where I asked God, what next? Then he, he said, there is something that you have not given me. Mm. And I asked, what? He said, you have not given me food mm -hmm. to eat. So I was so confused. And as usual, when I got down, I asked one of my spiritual fathers, and he said, you have done everything for God. When, we, when God said, you have not given me food to eat, what he drinks, what he, he eats is worship. Mm. But you are right. I've done, I've come up with concerts, I've done everything. Then the Lord said, I have given you a ministry, and the ministry is to gather people just under my feet and to worship, and I, Jehovah, will come in. As a matter of fact, I did not know what God wanted to do at that particular time. So when we got down 2013, it was somewhere June, June 4th. The next day was a holiday, mm. so it was somewhere Thursday. Um, we had a wonderful time at the National Theater, and it was so surprising, weekday, People came to yeah, the nice. fullest. Mm -hmm. And the revival and what happened at the auditorium was, was something else. Then I got to understand why God asked me to do that. Mm -hmm. So we have to break, take a break, 2014. Why? Because it was so much full that we need to get a bigger place. So 2015... I went to ICGC Calvary Temple, and my father said, I'm going to give the place to you. But there was a caution on it mm. that 2013, it was a gate fee. But right from 2015, the Lord gave me a caution not to take any money. And this one, I'm, I'm, making, I'm making it emphatically. Why? Because... In 2015, when I did not take money, I was, I was ministering, and I went out to the overflow. There was this guy that was so drunk, mm. and then he fell under my feet, and I was crying. And then he said, Oima, I want your God to deliver me. 
Oh. Oh my God. And I've had so many miracles. Oh. So I want your God to deliver me. And I'm saying it to the glory of God that that gentleman is out of this alcoholism and he is part of the team that worked for me now. Oh, wow. That's great. I mean, that is impact. That we, is. We, we have mm. had lots of testimonies. And for Tahila experience, I told my team that I'll be doing a concert where it will be paid. But when it comes to Tahila experience, I am strictly going according to what God has asked me to do. And I'm telling you, why overflow? Because of the testimonies that God gives to people. And they go and come back with so much. And I've had one lady from Europe, Germany, that flew all the way to the program and went the next day for the fruit of the womb. Wow. And do you know what happened? In two months' time, I had a call that, Mommy, what the doctors are saying, it is not possible, has become possible. I can go on and on and on. I don't know what God is doing a lot of under this atmosphere. But when it comes to Tahil experience, the preparation alone and the readiness of the people, sometimes they don't come because of the artists. Mm. They come purposely. And one of the videos that I saw, there was this old man that, was, that did not have the chance to enter the auditorium, was standing outside holding the wall and was praying. I started crying. So when it comes to Tahila experience, so it's actually, Tahila experience actually positioned me very well. And I have to make sure that I don't disappoint mm. everyone. Yeah. It's, it's happening... This year? Yes, it's happening this year on the 14th of August. August. 14th yes. of August. In Accra and Kumasi. Yes, in Accra. Wow. Kumasi will be announced during our press lunch. Yeah. But Accra's date is the uh, 14th of August. I mean, it's a, it's a concert that you have a lot of um, artists. Last year was Phil Thompson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I was at the press um, launch. Yes. Um, we've been talking about collaboration mm -hmm. among ourselves as artists and even going beyond. You reached out to Phil Thompson. How easy... Was it getting him on board? And people have also talked about, you know, our, our closest <laughs> brothers and sisters from Nigeria. I remember there was a, a week that it was just about Ghana and Nigerian gospel artists, how they treat themselves and, you know, all of those things. How easy or difficult is it for you to get, you know, for you to get into Nigeria? And for get, me, by the mm. grace of God, it's, it's not that quite uh, frustration. Mm. I, I get it so easy because um, before we contact any artist. We work on it for about six months. Okay. And then we get close to them. And you just showing the video to them um, gives them that heart to and the readiness to come mm -hmm. and work. So it's very, very easy. Um, talking about the closeness mm -hmm. of artists like the Nigerians, I, I've had an encounter with few of them. And for me, I was so blessed after last year's Tahila and, um, is it um, this lady? Sinach. Sinach, yeah. And she inboxed me in the, on, on Instagram and said, oh. this is an awesome, awesome presence. And I would love to be part of it. We actually wanted her on for this year, but okay. she has an engagement. She promised to come next year. Okay, oh, that's, yes. that's great. Um, now to some industry question before Sidor comes in. Do you feel like gospel artists are appreciated in our industry? Do, I mean, I spoke to Rudy Kwachi. He organized a One, one Voice Festival. That was last mm -hmm. week. Also, where a platform for gospel artists. I'm asking, you've been in the game for a long time. Do you think that Ghanaian music industry, or the Ghana music industry, appreciates gospel artists, sees the, the value of gospel artists? Gradually, mm -hmm. gradually we're getting there. Um, it was so frustrating at first. But by the grace of God, um, we having the platform to show what we have is actually getting closer to the place. But I believe we'll, we'll get there. But then this is so difficult okay. sometimes. Right, okay. So I, I am mostly concerned about the person out there who's watching you trying to get something inspiring from you.
when we were talking, I was, what I was thinking was, I really want to find out throughout your journey what exactly, like some of the distractions that came your way and how you fought it to get you here. Sometimes, um, I remember coming up for the first time, um, there was this program, TV3, Music Music, and because <laughs> they didn't know who I represent, I remember I was being shouted on by the director. I cried. Mm -hmm. So the frustration of you not being recognized, especially when you are a, um, a new artist, is so frustrating. And sometimes um, um, having the church not to understand that this is the work that we do, and that when you are coming to their progress, especially traveling with your instrumentalists and, and, and your musicians, um, Sometimes you need to understand that you need to take care of them. And you go to a program and you are not well taken care of and yeah. all that. But in all, by the grace of God, now the brand is standing out. And that at first, like you felt, you, you, now you are being treated very, very well. But it wasn't easy at all. It wasn't easy. The, the business of making music as a gospel artist, how is it like? Um, People talk about, like you mentioned, um, oh, and you're you know, we'll give, you, we'll give you some drink and, and something. Yeah. Else, you know. The problem is because the so for and when you become a gospel musician, that familiarity is of yeah. you singing in the church. Why do I have to take care of you? Oh, that's the way they are. Yeah, yeah, so frustrating. But now, gradually, they, they are getting to understand that it's the work that we do. So yeah. most of the times you go to, mostly when I'm going to church, I don't charge. But the way they will treat you now is better of Way better. Yeah. Can we talk about your fashion sense? Like, I mean, way different. It has really evolved. What influenced it? I don't actually know that. <laughs> For me... I, I just choose what actually makes me beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And I am so particular about not exposing myself. Always looking very, very simple. Yeah. And classy. Yes. Okay. That, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hold up, hold up. One question. Her question has drawn my attention to... <laughs> Ghanaians have this issue of always critiquing and judging gospel artists, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to their personal lifestyle that comes out there, yeah. their yeah. physical appearance and all of that. As a gospel artist, how are you supposed to pose yourself to the public? Bible says, we are doing now who can you You have the power to choose everything, but what do you represent? If you will know what you represent, then you have to know what to wear and what not to wear. Okay. When it okay. comes to makeup, mm -hmm. as a gospel artist, is makeup bad? Because as Isidro uh, said, a lot of people criticize yeah. the woman, mm -hmm. even Dinah Samoa, mm -hmm. with her makeup and her nice hair and all that. A lot of people criticize her a lot. Many, making it look like as a gospel artist or as, as a, a Christian, Christian, you're not supposed to look good. Yes, yes yeah. good. Looking beautiful is excellent. Even Christ loves it. But too much of everything is bad. Sometimes um, we are not saying you should not put on makeup. But there is a way that you put on makeup... <laughs> that a call overboard cry. So it's good like you, you make up moderate and look good. Putting on makeup is not a bad thing at all. It's okay. good. I, I CD, CD sales, one of the <laughs> part of the music industry that benefited from that so much was the gospel music industry. CD mm -hmm. sales, it's evolved over the period. How have you made sure that you, know, you still have your music distributed out there we to have, the people. We mm. have great digital platforms that yeah. is yeah. really, really yeah. giving us more money than even the sales of CD. <laughs> and some of us are putting some of our songs on, um, what do you call it? Um, 
Pen drives. So Pen drives. Yeah. And we are selling it out there. So now with the digital platforms, is really, really helping us. Mm. Because we've moved to the digital yeah. um, reign. You have a lot of sons and daughters, and we're wrapping up. Them. <laughs> sons and daughters, um, you yourself, you were a BV, and most of them are BVs, banking yeah. vocalists. Yeah. You yourself were a BV to some artists too. Sometimes they would come out and like do their own thing. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for them? I mean, yesterday Majid was saying that until it's your time, serve. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Service is the key. And if you really want to be very, very successful, service is the number one key. Discipline. Sticking to your core and allowing God to direct you. These are the five things you need to look at. It's very, very important. I think it, it applies to everything. I mean, yeah. like everything, <laughs> everything, in, everything life. in life. It you applies know, to it. You know, when you have backing vocalists who feel like they've got very good yeah, voices yeah, yeah. and, you know, they, they do this for like six months, that. a year, and you're like, you know what? It's like I it's want to start with all go without, you know, giving us something. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Some you rap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Big mommy you rap. <laughs> Big mommy rap. Artimimo. 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 Me wo Jesus. Artimimo. Artima kumemu. Oh, mum wami. Artimimo. Come on now. Artimimo. Uh -huh. Jesus, me move. It's your turn. Come on, darling. Come on. Let's go. Come on now. Hey, We're too much. Jesus, so on that note, we will be featured on the next two. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. God bless you so much. That you joined us today. God bless you. Bless you too. And your performance at the VGMA was super. Oh, yeah. I will love that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we draw the curtains on today's show.